Hey, Jay in Dayton, Ohio. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. And before I begin, i got to show you something. Without Dayton, the state of North Carolina would be nothing because of two brothers. We now became first in flight. And, of course, this is my license plate here in North Carolina. I am Wayfair. And speaking of Wayfair, I want to show you. Hang on, let me turn everything on. You can see it's 828 and 34 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina. Durham, the dirty D. But speaking of Wayfarers, you are about to get the nicest of the nice. This is the Ray-Ban 2140 QM, which is the leather Wayfarers in the color 1152, which is the black leather. Of course, you get the Italian leather case. You get all the accoutrements, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, naturally. But you also get the book talking about the icons and it describes that color that you are getting the black leather in a few languages but you're gonna get all the accoutrements including the original lens packets but this is the star of the show the main attraction with the embossed Ray-Ban emblem the black leather original Wayfair frames and of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the temples to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from let me take that off. You're going to get all the original while it's being shipped from Italy. Hopefully you can read that on there. But this, of course, is the Wayfair Genuine Leather 2140 QM and the 1152 color, which is the black leather. It also, in a 50i size, it also comes in a brown leather, a green, a blue. But let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead. I've removed the original sunglass lenses that came in here. And I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my edger and let me go ahead and get this started I'm programming this shape into the computer so years from now if you want any other lenses I can send them right to your home that number comes up right there so it is reserved just for you Jay or should I call you secret agent 4769 so I'm gonna hit the start button caliper is gonna come down and this Tracer is going to come up the stylus and it's going to go around and trace the inside shape of the right lens before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or in your case, Jay, non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipts have my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase or write it off on your taxes, whether they are prescription or not. Now, Jay, you did upgrade to the transition lenses with Crizal Alizé, and that's what I'm going to put in here. No prescription. That's what the zero stands for. No prescription. So, if this were prescription, I'd put in your pupillary distance there and I'd put in the optical centers right there which would raise up just like the crosshairs of a scope. I measure vertically and horizontally but that is not necessary today. Let's go ahead and take the sleeves out of the original packets. We're going to pull that out and there's a little plastic laminate on the lens to protect the lens while it's being shipped. So I'm going to place this onto the platform to begin. In fact this is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need to use a double-sided adhesive sticker, of which I have two left up here, just two, before I run out. Now the black side is the sticky side, so I'm going to stick this one onto the first block, put it up there. We're going to stick it onto the second block. Now on the back is a little silver button. That is a magnet. That's going to do its job twice tonight. The first time is now. I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. The magnet is going to hold it in place to this magnet in the arm. And I'm going to hit this button. The arm is going to come down and place the block onto which will be the right lens. Or the left since these are non-prescription. This is a rare time. It really doesn't matter. Take the other lens out of the protective sleeve. And of course you're going to get these original packets. Pull the paper away. I mean, I'm sorry, the little laminate that protects the lens. Place the lens on there. It already mirrors the measurements from the right. I don't have to program anything on these. Put the pad in there. Hit the button. Now the block's going to come down in place, or the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy anymore. 
but the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens until it's the final size and shape. This wheel in the center is what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to take the first lens. I'm going to place it into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles. And this is where the magnet's going to hold it to do its job a second time. And again, yes, that is the chuck, but as I mentioned, I call that the Charles because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. Free bad humor with every pair of glasses sold. So I'm going to wake up the computer. This is the shape of the lens I will be cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. If it were plastic, high index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that material, but we are using polycarbonate. I do not want to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen anyway. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I only want to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. So let me go ahead and hit the green arrow, which is play. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's tracing the shape that it will be cutting. And the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Now, of course, in this prescription, in this non-prescription fashion lens, you are not going to have any edge prescription, edge thickness. But because I do cut very strong prescriptions all day long, that becomes more critical. Now, if you see light flickering in the back, that is water running. It is there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic and high index plastic cut wet. So that is your lens cutting. As I mentioned, your lenses are polycarbonate. These are the Essilor brand of lenses, and Essilor calls polycarbonate air wear because they feel they are as light as air. The TR stands for transition. This is the Transitions 7 Series. GY is gray. But don't take my word for it, it's written right there. Transition Signature 7 gray lenses. And of course it also has the Crizal Alizé. And so you know that you are getting the real packets. I always highlight this for people. Let me go ahead and highlight this one, the Crizal Alizé. And I will do the same thing on the left lens. So you will, the packets you will receive have this yellow highlighter on there. And in red, let's go ahead and mark this one the right lens. And we'll mark this one the left. And I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and put J on here. So you know who they are. You see that J? So if you miss any of that, let me recap. Oh, what bad humor that is. Hey, you, you, you moan about it now, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. So again, you are getting the Crizal Alizé, which is three features in one. Let me pull a lens without any anti-glare on there. The first feature of the anti-glare is it eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescent lights, that kind of thing. It's also a reflection-free lens. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their own reflection in your glasses, so it makes for much better eye contact. But uh, the real reason people buy it, if you take a selfie or if someone else takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in your lens, you'll see just your eyes. Now the third feature that I like, which is the practical side, as it comes with the industry's hardest scratch protection. Because the machine that applies the anti-glare coating, the Crizal, costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize seven different coatings onto the lens. So in just a moment, this door will open and I'm gonna open it with my mind. If you like that, I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can, it just takes a couple hours, but I can do it. I'm just going to dry your lens off and make sure that use my thumbnail to make sure there's no optical debris around the edge of the lens. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner and then pushing down at the nose. It does not want to go in. I do not want to force it. So I'm going to take it back out. I'm going to go down one tenth of a millimeter and hit the retouch button. Now a millimeter to my American friends who have no idea, a millimeter is the distance around, the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off going all the way around the edge of the lens until it pops in there easily. I do not want to force the lens into the frame. If I did, I would cause the frame to stretch. It would cosmetically affect 
your frame as well as shorten the life of it. And because I am a perfectionist and I cut every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide, you want a perfectionist like me taking care of your lenses. Now, as I was saying about the anti-glare, the Crizol machine, it literally vaporizes seven different layers onto your lens. Each layer is a different color because it takes over 24 hours to do that. And again, to protect the, your time and, and, well, their time and your investment, they put the hardest scratch coating possible on any lens out there. So, that's what you get now. You do see water spraying onto the lens. It does that for the last 20 seconds while it's getting the safety bevel now on the rear back surface of the lens. If these were thick lenses, which they're not, but if these were prescription lenses, if it were to protrude outside the back surface of the frame and come in contact with the cheek, I want it to be smooth. But the other reason I want it to be smooth on the back surface as as I tuck it into, let me do this here. As I pop this into the frame, I want it to be smooth as it's touching the front surface of the frame. So again, I tuck it into the outside corner using my thumbs. I press down at the nose. It does not want to go just yet. Again, I'm not going to force it. I apologize. This takes a couple extra minutes. But again, you want your lenses to be in there perfect. So the lens does not go into the cutting wheel. It goes straight to the bevel wheel. And little by little, the golden rule, you can always cut more off of the lens, you can never add it back on. So I always start a little bit larger and then work my way down. So I've removed one tenth of a millimeter before. And where's my sizing? Now I'm gonna take another one tenth for a total of 0.20. One fifth of a millimeter around the circumference of the lens. So the water kicks in for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle and of course I was talking before but as you will see a little lever is going to come out at the end of that lever is a spinning wheel something you would find at the end of a Dremel tool and that's what's applying the safety bevel to the back surface of the lens and actually because it's done this enough we should be good to go I'm going to go ahead and stop the cycle now, Jay, I want you to open the door with your mind this time. Concentrate, concentrate. Hey, Jay, pretty good. First day on the job. Oop, hey, wrong button, wrong button. Stop, stop. Don't cut any more off. Don't cut any more off. Open up, come on. Jay, one more time. Open the, look, it's trying to do the thing. There we go. Let me hit that button, which opens up the chuck. Thank you, Charles. I will take the lens out. Now, let's see if it fits. We are going to tuck it in at the outside corner using the thumbs hang on hang on is it in there right let me make sure it's in there right if not i will take a little bit more off again it looks like it's growing this time there we go is it in that corner there we go it is in there good let's go ahead and cut the left lens we're going to flip that over to l tuck it in and hit the green start button just like before the door closes the clamps gonna shut and then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame what's it doing come on what's it doing what you doing why aren't you starting never done this before always on camera wouldn't you know it wouldn't you know it don't freeze up on me now baby not live the show must go on okay let me shut this thing down i'm gonna have to turn it off and i'll start the editing again as soon as the thing's back up and ready to go i apologize for the delay okay i apologize for that we're we're awake the machine's going to behave at least i hope let me keep my fingers crossed when we put the lens back in there we are on the left lens we're going to hit start the door closes the clamp shuts and then we better start. Are you gonna start? There we go. So again, it's gonna be traced by the two white styluses, making sure it's large enough to fit. Measure the thickness to know exactly where to place the bevel. Now the wheel is starting up. Good, I'm relieved. This thing costs $40,000. You can't be acting up on me. It is the end of a long day. So in just a moment, the left lens will drop down and begin cutting. It's 
slowly but surely. Here we go. So we can go ahead and take this block off. And the right lens is done. We'll get it cleaned up later. Now if these were prescription, I would come down here and verify them in my Marco 101 lensometer to check the prescription. Make sure everything is accurate. Unnecessary at this point. Look at this, look at this. Everything's going wrong tonight. Everything's going wrong. Come on, cleaning cloth. You just hang out right there. If you notice the the lens is completely flat just like a nickel I could take it out now and it would stand up on its own and of course the double measuring system the check and balance is again it's measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place it down onto the the bevel wheel now it's going to come down and get the knife like edge a very dull knife like me but knife like edge nonetheless your lens is going to be so sharp you'll be able to cut through a piece of wet tissue providing you soak the tissue in a bucket of water overnight and then use all of your strength then you might be able to cut through that tissue so water has begun spraying on it just to wash away any optical sawdust if you will in just a moment that lever at the very bottom of the screen will come out and apply as of now Glad everything's working right. Again, that little spinning wheel at the end of the lever. And it's going to apply the safety bevel to the back surface, the concave surface of the lens. Now, again, in just a moment, this door better open. I can't trust the machine tonight. You never know what it's going to do. Open up the Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Charles. Chucky Baby. I'm going to have to come up with some sweeter names since Valentine's Day is just a couple days away. I'm going to go ahead and tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. And actually, nope, doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go since when it flipped over. So let me take another tenth of a millimeter off and put it back in <coughs> i apologize for everything taking a little bit longer tonight but that's what happens on live tv this is the life and times day one of working in an optical lab i've been doing this for 15 years so nothing surprises me <coughs> excuse me except i've got a tickle in the throat So again, I'm going to take another tenth of a millimeter off this lens. <coughs> Gracious, where's my water? Here's my water bottle. All right, you get to see everything behind the scenes tonight. <coughs> gracious, gracious, gracious. Everything happens in the bewitching hour, which is 9 o'clock tonight. We got here at 8 a.m. this morning. It's coming up on the end of a 13-hour day. I still got to go home, get all the videos loaded, get everything shipped. But that's nothing. The normal 15-hour day and the life and times of a licensed optician. Just to get everything shipped. So again, we're going to start by tucking the lens in at the outside corner. Pushing around the edges. Push down at the nose. This leather does not want to give. All right, take it off again. One tenth of a millimeter. You didn't see that one coming. Until everything fits in there perfectly. So this is one of my longer videos. But you're going to get your money's worth out of this video. Making me work for it. What is the time? 8.52. Check the time. We're looking good. We're looking good.
Okay. If all goes well, this will be the last time I have to remove the lens tonight. Open up the sweet little Chucky. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner and then using the thumbs, press down the nose and now it snaps in. Good little lens, good little lens. We can go ahead and take this block off. It is no longer needed. Now, this is the point in all the videos that as I clean the lenses, I mentioned that when you get these in the mail, and of course free shipping anywhere in the United States, but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side could sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And when I say wobble, I take mine off and I set them on the counter and they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Flip these over. There's no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they do and they're not askew. Now I'm also going to include one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths. You get your Ray-Ban cloth with the purchase. You also get the Crizal cleaning cloth and I include one of mine and I always field test every cloth to make sure that it works. I don't want to send you a defective cloth. Now I also provide you with instructions on not only how to care for the, your frames and lenses but for the cleaning cloth and the case so they will last you for years. No other seller on the internet does that I am told. I also include a photo request to have your picture on the website. Feel free to decline but I would love to have someone modeling these leather wayfarers. Actually I do have one person. I want to have a second person modeling these. So this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them in the little transitions box here in the corner. And as you will see as I turn on the UV light, all transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks that they're exposed. Now Jay, this is important, pay attention. All transition lenses will turn dark on day one as you will see. Oh, but yeah, they're, they're also temperature sensitive, meaning that they will they will get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. Also, they will not work in a car if you're behind a windshield. As soon as you step out of the car, they will darken. It's just that your windshield has UV protection to stop your upholstery from rotting, your dashboard from cracking, from sitting in the sun. But they will work in a convertible or a motorcycle. You have to have direct exposure to the sun. Now in just a moment, the light will turn off and I will bring these out. And of course, this is what they look like the first time they've been darkened. Jay, don't worry. They're going to keep getting darker and darker. Remember, we talked about this. Don't you remember? So that's it. If anyone has any questions, just email me through this link or at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. And hopefully, Jay in Dayton, Ohio, you have enjoyed watching as I cut. It's a long watch, but watching as I cut transition lenses with Crizal Alizé for your Ray-Ban Wayfarer. 2140 QM, the color 1152, which is the black leather and the 50 eye size. And hopefully everyone else has got a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you. <laughs>